The Panasonic WM61A condenser mic is a great option for do-it-yourself audio people to learn about basic mic concepts and experiment without having to spend a lot of money or deal with the complicated challenges associated with true condenser mics. These are certainly the best $2 you could spend in the world of microphones. The most significant drawback of these mics is the limit of sound pressure level that they can handle. When exposed to levels above about 95 dB, they produce an unacceptable level of distortion. I first ran into this distortion when I was experimenting with binaural dummy head mics that use this capsule. This distortion is not a mechanical limitation of the diaphragm, but amplifier distortion in the built-in FET that serves as a preamp. That FET can actually be rewired from its native common source configuration into a source follower. This modification is commonly referred to as the Linkwitz mod. There are two versions of this modification. The one I'm going to show is the three-wire mod. The downside of this reconfiguration is that the output of the mic is significantly reduced, and as a result, the signal-to-noise ratio gets worse. Cut the trace between the capsule's source terminal and the aluminum case. A fresh X-Acto blade works well for this. Once the trace is completely scraped away, use a multimeter to verify there is no continuity between the source terminal and the case. Strip and tin three fine pieces of wire. This wire came from an old mouse cord. Trim the tinned portion of the wires to about 1 16th of an inch. With a very fine point soldering iron, tin the extra trace that connects to the aluminum case. The solder will not bond to the aluminum, it only bonds to the trace. Tack a tinned wire to the tinned trace. Inspect the result carefully to ensure you didn't get a cold solder joint. If you have never soldered small electronics before, this is probably not the place to start. This is the most challenging part of the procedure and the most delicate connection. Tack the other two tinned wires to the capsule's terminals. At this point, you have the modified capsule that is ready to use. I like to add some additional structure around the mic and wires to avoid any strain on the delicate solder connections. I take about a quarter inch of clear vinyl tubing and slide the capsule into it. It helps to soften the vinyl with a hot air gun or other heat source. Press the capsule all the way flush to the end of the tubing. Fill the capsule with hot melt glue. It helps to pre-warm the whole assembly so that the glue will flow around and bond with all the surfaces. The glue will also guarantee an airtight sealer on the back of the mic body. It is possible to compromise the original seal when scraping that first trace.